Thank you very much. It's really nice to see all of you all here. I hope that when you get uh, out this evening, uh, everyone will still be pleasant because it's a pretty crowded room. <laughs> um, my reason for being in this company is a very simple one. I'm a doctor. I'm not sure how Barbara and Chad and, and Mary got into it, but I said, what can I do to help my patients? And I had someone come along and tell me that uh, there was a product that was being uh, promoted that supposedly is going to be a revolutionary product in terms of its actions on the body. And that maybe the whole world ought to be on it. And so I took a look at him and I said, get out of here, Satan. I don't want to hear you anymore. <laughs> but he was again, persistent. Huh? Yeah, talking about you. He was persistent. So George Capone came back to me and said, look, uh, what if I got you some science? And I said, well, if you got me some science, I will, at least because you came back, I will go read it. And I did. By the time I got through the next two or three months of reading the papers that I read, uh, I was very, very excited. I was very, very excited because Dr. Blasini and I, he's a rheumatologist, and I work on problems every day that are called inflammatory in nature. And we all know that that's the basis of all disease processes. So I'm going to give you a little primer on disease. It starts this way. You take a cell which has a nucleus. This is the governing body of this cell. And that nucleus you might want to consider as being the general. And inside the cell are a bunch of organelles, or little organs that are manufacturing for us the things we need. And inside the nucleus are little energy things called mitochondria. And these mitochondria need energy to operate and they get it from the one thing everybody in this room has in common. Oxygen. All of you are breathing, therefore all of you and I are the same. The oxygen is combusted, and when it's combusted, it produces what are called free radicals, and free radicals are the byproduct of the utilization of oxygen in the cell. Now, that is the basis of all disease. The day you were conceived, you started getting mom's blood. God bless her, we all love our mother. But she also had free radicals in her blood. So we started out, and this was, this was a, an epiphany for me, uh, Raphael, when I started reading that endothelial dysfunction, that's when the lining of an artery is not working right, and they found it in the fetus. And I said, how can that be? Until I understood this process. Well, if you have an injury that occurs to any organ in our body, you get a reaction, and that reaction is called inflammation. So I'll write that word down for you because you read about it in the press all the time. And what is inflammation to us doctors? Inflammation is the immune systems or the body's response to the injury caused by a free radical. So if this guy, this, uh, this unstable side product of breathing of oxygen, of combusting our food and combusting our intake of oxygen, is not neutralized immediately, it attaches any place it can. It doesn't care who it dances with, it'll go to the dance and dance with anybody. <laughs> as long as they'll put their arms around them. So, <laughs> in our cells, we have things called <clears throat> antioxidants being produced. Anti oxidants being produced by these little organelles in here which for the moment I'll call factories and they're producing antioxidants in huge numbers so that we can neutralize the free radicals but now think about it we start out with a cell full of antioxidants in a tiny tiny little bit of inflammation because we had it from mom. But as we go through life, this happens very, very slowly but progressively. And so at a point in time, 
when we reverse the abundance of antioxidants because the general sent out a message and said make anti-inflammatories, we now have a situation with, with which we have a, a huge problem because we're not going to stop breathing until we die. And so we're going to keep combusting food, we're going to keep having oxidative stress, but we're going to have less and less antioxidant production to fight the battle. So there is a system in which these things are made in the first place, and it resides in a protein called NRF2, Nuclear Release Factor 2. It has a much longer name, but I'm making it easy for you because that's what you're going to read about, NRF, NRF2. And it's stable and sits in there. And when we get a stimulus to that, it's called protandum, the product, the master product of this company. It goes here, it's released. It's like a ship that's being held captive by its anchor. It's released, sends a message to the, to the general up here and says, hey boss, we are really getting, we're really getting clobbered now. We've got such a rent in our wall. We got so many uh, free radicals that we can't handle them. You need to reverse the engines in your factories down here, and you need to make antioxidants. And in fact, that's what protandum does. Protandum, and I'm making it, I'm dumbing it down real easy for for all of us because I'm not a very smart guy, so I've got to make it easy. I've got to understand how it works. This combination of herbs taken out of our own biosphere, where we have lived and breathed and evolved for all these years, has the ability to stimulate our intrinsic, means our own God-given, nature-given cells to make millions of molecules of antioxidants and enzymes immediately. Not a one-to-one -one reaction, but millions. So what happens is the amount of inflammation producing uh, products decreases, the amount of antioxidants increase, and we get marked decreases in inflammation. That's what I learned when I went to the science. All of you understood that clearly? Yeah. yeah. Well, I still didn't believe it. <laughs> so I went into my office and I told that young lady there, she's my nurse practitioner, we need to find out if this is true. So we ordered on our patients all the anti-inflammatory markers. And if it's correct, and my colleagues can correct me, that all disease is going to elicit inflammation which ends up in a scar, then we should see evidence of inflammation decreasing if we use this product. So I'm not from Missouri. I'm from Ybor City, which is worse. <laughs> and I'll tell you that the amount of inflammation that we saw in some patients was pretty average, and some was enormous, and some was barely visible. But every single one of those patients that we put on ProTandem and remeasured their inflammatory markers all improved. Now, I'm not a real visual guy because I, I, I'm often accused of can't tell red from green, but, but I can see this army, this battle going on in a cell. And this battle is a battle that can only be won if we were able to somehow survive without using oxygen, but we can't. So we'll never win the battle, but what we can do is we can really, really suppress the rapid progression of disease, and we can really help patients enormously. The second reason I'm in this is because I work with a foundation, and the foundation does some worldwide things with impoverished people. And I thought, well, if this works, this is something I ought to be able to give a whole population of patients and delay the enormous amount of cardiac, cancerous, rheumatologic, and other problems that these folks are going to have, chronic diseases, <coughs> until a much later time in their life. So I'm hoping that will be the case. But this whole process is something that truly amazes me. And so my colleagues here in the room, I would say if you asked us 
seven years ago, tell me about NRF2. We just said, what the hell are you talking about? And in fact, I've done that. Just last week, my foundation had a golf tournament, and I, and I asked three of my cardiology colleagues who were there supporting the foundation, you heard of NRF2? Give me a beer, will you? <laughs> so you're not going to hear it from your doctors very easily. And I feel very honored that we've got some doctors in the room today. Because what we doctors are all about is making sure that before we do anything, we do no harm. And if we're going to do some good, we need to know that there's evidence that good will be done. And I think at the end of the day, what we've learned is that these four products from this company all activate this immune process. They all activate the NRF2 system, one way or the other, to produce large increases in catalase, superoxide dimutase, peroxidase, glutathione, all the big anti-inflammatory molecules. If you believe in fish oil, get baptized with us. Get confirmation with us. Go to communion with us. Because fish oils have not even one-third the power that this has in combating uh, inflammation. So my, so my little talk is over. If you asked me, should I take this, my answer is, Every single human being on this planet should be taking it. Because, no, oh, we don't want organ transplants to do it. But if we take it at the beginning, we'll avoid, the, avoid perhaps the organ transplant. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so that's my story. Sticking to it. I'll see you later.